In this video, I want to go through another example of calculating reaction rates. So this problem, we're going to actually use some real data. So um, instead of being given the how much you know of a of a given uh, compound was decomposed or produced over time, we're actually going to have to use the data in order to calculate that. So uh, in this problem, it says at 40 degrees C, H2O2 hydrogen peroxide will decompose according to the following reaction, uh, where H2O2 will decompose to form water, liquid water, and oxygen gas. The data in the table below, so the table over here, was collected for the concentration of hydrogen peroxide at various temperatures or at various times. Using this data, answer the following questions. First, calculate the average rate of decomposition of H2O2 between 0 and 20,000 seconds. Use this rate to calculate the average rate of production for O2 over the same period of time. And then for the second part, it says, what are these rates for the time period 20,000 seconds to 40,000 seconds, right? So, um, so basically it's giving you, um, it's giving you some data here, right? For hydrogen peroxide, you have the time that's elapsed and you have the concentration of hydrogen peroxide that's present. So before we actually dig into this one, I will say this is how a lot of kinetic studies are done in the laboratory. Usually you know how much of your reactant you can study how much of its concentration is decomposed over time you just look at what the concentration of that reactant is at different time periods and that gives you the rate of the reaction so first off i like to just write out all of the different ways that we can express our rate so that we know the different relationships we have between the concentrations of these different species so if we're looking at it from the standpoint of rate of disappearance of our reactant We'll have negative one half the change in concentration of H2O2 over time, right? Again, negative because this is disappearing and this one half comes from the two in front of as a stoichiometric coefficient for, um, for hydrogen peroxide. And if we think about this in terms of the formation of our products, right, we could have the change in concentration of O2 over time. And finally, we could have one half the change in concentration of water over time, right? So you don't have to really write this out every time you do problems. I just like to uh, do this so I can show you guys all of the different relationships that we have between these different concentrations. So even though we've only been given information about hydrogen peroxide, we actually can use that to figure out what we need to about O2. Right. So the first part of this question is asking us to use the rate, calculate the rate of decomposition and use that to calculate the rate of production of O2. So that's the first thing we got to do here. Right. So first, what I'm going to do is use this data in order to calculate the rate of decomposition of H2O2. Right. So what we're after is this rate of decomposition. Right. Of H2O2 over time. And this we can get from our data, right? So we're starting with a one molar solution of H2O2, right? So that's going to be our initial and our final at the, at the elapsed time interview is going to be 0.5, right? So basically we go, you know, Delta anything is going to be final minus initial. So your final concentration is 0 0.5 minus your initial concentration, which is 1.0. And you're going to put that over your elapsed time. So we have, um, you know, again, final minus initial. So you got 2.16 times 10 to the 4 minus 0, which is your starting point, right? Okay, so when you plug these in, you get the following. You get negative 2.315 uh, times 10 to the negative 5 molar per second. In fact, let me make sure I put my units here, right? These are seconds and these are all molar, right? Molarity for your uh, H2O2 solution, right? So that gives you the rate of decomposition of H2O2. Right? So that's actually part of what we we're asked to solve for. It said calculate the average rate of decomposition of H2O2. This is it. This is our rate of decomposition of H2O2. Now, the second part of that is now we have to use this to calculate the rate of production of O2. So that's where we're going to have to go to one of our uh, relationships here between 
um, the rate of production of O2 and the rate of decomposition of H2O2 from the rate equation. We can use that to calculate the rate of production of O2. So let me use a different color here. So we're going to calculate rate for O2, right? Using this relationship here, right? We know that, oh, let me make sure the box encompasses everything. There we go. That's our relationship between the rate of decomposition of our reactant and the rate of production of our product O2. So we're going to use that relationship in order to solve here. So we know that negative one half delta H2O2 over delta T is going to be equal to delta O2 delta T. Right now, this on the right hand side of this equation is what we're trying to solve for. So basically to solve for this, all we have to do is take what we solve for in this first part of part A and just chunk it in here and divide by two, right? And multiply by a negative sign and that's it, right? So if we do that, then our rate of production for O2 is going to be equal to 1.157 times 10 to the negative five meters per second, um, meters per second, molar per second. Okay, so that's our second half of part A. This is our rate of production of O2. So from just this data that was given to us about H2O2, we were able to calculate its rate of decomposition and we were able to use that data to calculate the rate of production of O2 using this relationship from the rate equation, right? Okay, so that's part A. So now part B is asking us to do the exact same thing, but for the second time interval, right? So what you'll notice is that, you know, if this is, this is actually the same um, amount of time, right? Um, yeah, this is actually the same amount of time that's, that's elapsed, but the rate of decomposition is, is slowing down, right? This actual rate is, is slowing down as time uh, elapses here, right? So if it loses 0.5, in the first time interval and then loses 0.25 in the second time interval. So let's account for that and calculate the rates during that time period. Okay, so basically doing the exact same thing here, right? So we have to use delta H2O2, delta T, right? So our final concentration in that time period is 0 0.250 molar minus our initial the beginning of that time period is 0 0.5. And our uh, final time is 4.32 times 10 to the four seconds minus our initial time period, 2.16 times 10 to the four seconds. Right, so our rate at that point is negative 1.157 times 10 to the negative five molar per second, right? So that gives us our rate of decomposition for H2O2 in this second time interval, right? So as we can see here with the data, right? We didn't really need to do this calculation to say that this rate is slowed down, right? We said that before we even started. We knew that the rate slowed down. Now we're able to quantify it how that rate actually slowed down, right? It, it was cut in half, right? Same time interval, half the concentration is lost. This rate of decomposition was slowed in half during this time period, right? So again, second part of this here, uh, let's see, use red here. So second part of this is just calculating the rate for O2 using that exact same relationship, right? H2O2 over delta T is equal to delta O2 over delta T, right? So again, basically taking this number, chunking it into this equation and dividing by two and multiplying by the negative sign, then we get a final answer here, right? So our rate of production for O2 is gonna be 5.787 times 10 to the negative six molar per second. Okay, so that gives us our rate of production for O2. Okay, so in, in kind of summarizing this problem, 
what we're able to do is take data about the concentration of H2O2 over time, right? We only had data about our reactant, but using that data about our reactant, we're able to calculate its rate of decomposition, but also the rate of production of, of our oxygen, the product here, um, over these two different time intervals. And we're able to see how this uh, rate actually slowed down as time went on, right? Okay, so these rates alone are not enough to be able to predict exactly what the concentration of a given species is going to be over time. For that, we're going to need to use, instead of our differential rate laws, we're going to need to use integrated rate laws. And that's going to be the focus of the next video is, um, is what's the integrated rate law and how it will allow us to be able to calculate concentrations with respect to time.